While your high school physics textbook may have portrayed physics through the lens of equilibrium, much of what we observe in our universe exists on the fringes of such balance. Prineha Narang is here with us to discuss non-equilibrium and its quantum applications. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay to call you Pri? Absolutely. Everyone calls me Pri, and thank you for having me here. <laughs> yeah, glad to have you. So what do you find fascinating about the phenomenon occurring far for equilibrium? Okay, so when we think about materials, and this is the MRS meeting, most of these have been studied at equilibrium in right. their steady state. I tend to think of steady state and equilibrium as a happy place of uh, materials. What we can now do is drive them with lasers, with electron beams, with all these different techniques that get them far from equilibrium. And what we are finding is that it's not just slightly different from what you get in equilibrium. These properties are fundamentally different, right? These could be new kinds of hybrid like matter states. They could have properties that we can use in types of devices. These could be new phenomena that current theory can't describe, so it brings up new questions in theory. These are all, you know, really new kinds of uh, uh, excitations, new kinds of behaviors in materials. What do you um, see as like the biggest impact of, of these, I don't know, new, would you say new discoveries, new findings? Some of these materials and uh, these driven quantum materials in particular could enable new kinds of quantum technology. And I use the word quantum technology very specifically because to me that goes all the way from sensing, computing, networking, all the, the ways that we want to use quantum mechanics in these uh, various contexts. So I'll take the example of uh, quantum sensing because it's not as talked about as quantum computing. Right. <laughs> Say that you know quantum sensors could tell us about the universe around us. They could tell us about behavior of molecules in the atmosphere, fundamental constants of physics, and much more with sensitivities that you simply can't get with classical sensors. And this is not just 10%, 20% better. This is orders of magnitude better. Wow. And what we're doing now is using the non-equilibrium behavior of quantum materials to create these new kinds of sensors. And that hopefully will enable new technological advances, new measurement techniques, and just new basic science, right? So there's uh, the applied piece, there's how this becomes useful, and also discoveries that are in fundamental science. And why are these dynamics especially important when you talk about the next, de the development of the next gen quantum devices? Some aspect of non-equilibrium has kind of always existed when we make uh, devices, when we think about the behavior of these devices in real conditions. And I use the word real in quotes because theorists frequently talk about very idealized conditions for these uh, materials. So. The field arrived at non-equilibrium dynamics first entirely by accident, right? We said, oh, there's high temperature, that's creating this kind of thing. Or there's a laser, it's uh, creating this, this new kind of uh, state. So when folks started describing non-equilibrium dynamics initially, the instinct was to take an equilibrium theory and extend it out. Right. That is what you would do, you start with something you know, build on it. Makes sense, right. And then we realized actually the way you want to describe such dynamics is fundamentally different. The equations you want to use is different. The assumptions you can and cannot make are different. And that was actually something that uh, really went from a handful of people working on it to now multiple sessions here at Spring MRS. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. You want more Matt Sai? Well, don't go anywhere. Click right here to watch all of our content from the 2025 MRS Spring Meeting. Have fun.